It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to me again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Evan. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes buckaroos. They're great. Now, here's our story for tonight. We call it The Key. <laughs> Pat Brady's many duties about the Eureka Cafe, the one he has always avoided most dutifully is dishwashing. But this afternoon, Pat is a different man. He and Roy are in the kitchen of the restaurant, and Pat is beaming over, of all things... Ain't it a peach? Ain't it a beauty? Ain't it the berries? It looks to me like an automatic dishwasher. Well, sure. This darn thing is the neatest little mechanical marvel anyone ever invented. <laughs> Except the Nellabelle, of course. Pat, give you anything that's run by a motor and you're a happy man. <laughs> My goodness, that last customer left in a hurry. It didn't take him three minutes to eat his sandwich and drink his coffee. Say, you're making this cafe fancier every day, Dale. This automatic dishwasher's quite a thing. You sure you weren't in on that Zenith bank robbery to get the money for it? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't terribly expensive, Roy. And at least I can get Pat to wash the dishes now. Yeah, you sure can. Boy, this little baby is a dream. Uh, come on, give me that tray of dishes. Oh, Pat, you'll wear the machine out. This is only one coffee mug and a couple of plates. Well, that's all right. You gotta keep the kitchen spick and span. Here, let me take them. Now, watch how this thing works, Roy. See, you just lift this cover and stick the dishes inside. And, and then you then you close the cover and turn this knob and, and press this button. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you don't have to wait. This little beauty starts right off. Uh, no, stop the thing a minute, Pat. Well, you can't stop it once it started, Roy. Not without getting soap suds all over the place. No, sir. Once she starts, she runs a full cycle. Soaps, scrubs, washes, rinses, and three washes, and, and then blows the dishes dry. Well, how long does that take? Oh, about a half hour. Why, Roy? Well, I thought I saw a key or, well, or something in the bottom of that coffee mug you put in there, Pat. A key? Oh, it must have belonged to that nervous customer. The way he was shaking, he could have dropped it and never noticed it. Well, if you can't stop that mechanical pearl diver for a half an hour, maybe I'd better ride after the stranger and tell him to come back here for the key. He can't have more than two minutes start, and Trigger can surely catch that horse he had tied to hitching rail. <laughs> We'll catch him in a minute, Trigger. That stranger sure is in a hurry to get somewhere, though. Hey, mister! Come up a second. You forgot something. Well, how do you like that? He's pulling off the road and heading across the desert. Hey, mister! He's afraid of us, Trigger. Look at him dig. Uh, we'll catch him. His key probably isn't worth it, but... Come on, Trigger. Come on, let's go. Dave. Let go of my wrist, stranger. Look, you had no reason to pull a gun on me. You left the Eureka Cafe just a few minutes ago, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, I did. What's it to you? I only wrote after you to tell you that you dropped the key or something in your coffee mug. Now get hold of your nerves. I dropped it. Let me see here. Well, the key, why, it's gone. Well, sure, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I had it in a handkerchief in my breast pocket, and I must have wiped my forehead. If you'll just let me have that key, please, I'll... I guess you'll have to ride back to get it. You see, it's in the dishwasher. And they can't stop the thing until it washes, rinses, dries, and maybe bakes a cake or two. <laughs> Strange. I, 
I don't think you're kidding. I, I'll go back with you. When you rode up on me, I thought you might be someone else. Uh, my name's Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers? Well, my apologies, Roy. I'm Jim Fowler, and I'm a special investigator for the marshal at Zenith. Here are my credentials. Uh, good. If there's anything I can do to help you... Yeah, maybe you could, if you don't mind, helping an ex-convict. Listen, anything that's ex is your business, Jim. You can tell me what you want while we're riding back. Oh, thanks, Rogers. I've been out a year, and I'll guarantee I'm straight. That key is mighty important evidence in the Zenith Bank robbery, and, well, my nerves are pretty edgy until I get it to my boss. When we get the key, I'll ride into Zenith with you if you like. Oh, great. I had a hunch that I knew the gang who pulled the robbery. I asked the marshal to put me on the case because I figured that I could help square myself with society by catching them. Well, that's the kind of talk I like to hear, Jim. I got in touch with the gang and found out all I wanted to know. They've hidden the money they took in a safe deposit box in the very bank they robbed. And you might say that I managed to liberate the key right out of the pockets of the leader. That took nerve, Fowler. Well, I couldn't take five men by myself, so I took some evidence. I'm sure Parker's missed the key by now, and that's why when you came riding after me, I... Wheel your horses and hunt down, Jim. Dig in. That's gunfire. Well, that's got to be Parker and his gang. I, I knew I couldn't make it. Well, we can make it. At least we can make shelter in those cliffs off to the right. Yeah, I see where you mean, Rogers. Over where that big rock seems to be balanced on nothing. That's balanced rock. And below it is a protected ledge where we can at least defend ourselves. <laughs> Creeping in closer, Roy. It's mighty tough to get a beat on them with all those rocks for cover. Well, it's tough for them to get a beat on us, too. We can't waste any ammunition, though. And unless we can figure a way to outwit them, we're eventually going to have to make a dash for it. Yeah, we're safe here unless they actually charge us. It's better than running smack into their gunfire on the open road. Yeah. This was the only place to go. It's a safe place for our horses, too. Forget you and your pack, Roy. Partner hemmed in, Fowler. That's Parker, all right. We've got you outnumbered. We'll pick you off eventually. You better give up. I'll see if I can scare them out from behind that rock. Rats flank around to their left. We'll pin them down and shoot them like fish in a barrel. We're in a tough spot, Jim. I'll try talking to him. Uh, what do you want with us, Parker? I don't recognize your voice, but we want the key Fowler's got. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Fowler does. Open up on him, boys. Smack him out of there. Roy, we'll never get out of here. If we move, those bullets will catch us. Easy, Jim. All right, Fowler. Come out and give us the key and we'll let you go. Otherwise, you'll get worse than that. I haven't got the key. I left it in the Eureka Cafe in Mineral City. No, Jim. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. But, Roy, I... well, My friends are back there alone. I'm going back to check your story, Fowler. It's only a couple of miles and Al and I can ride it in a hurry. Only the other three boys are going to keep you and your friend holed in there till we find out if you're lying. Give them another round, boys. Show them we mean business. I'm sorry, Roy. I didn't realize I was putting your friends in danger. I mean, this thing's so deep, I just don't know what to do. Well, the first thing to do is for us to get out of here. Let's draw the fire of the men they left and see how they're grouped. We'll each fire once. Good enough. There are three of them, and they're pretty close together, just below the ledge that's protecting us. We still can't run for it, Roy. Well, not unless we get their attention off of us for a minute. How could we do that? Well, maybe I can lasso the top of the balanced rock and pull it over. If I can jerk it hard enough, it'll bounce off this ledge and down where they are. But if it falls straight down, Roy, it'll smash us. That's a chance we'll have to take, Jim. That key means a lot to you, but Pat and Dale mean more to me. Come on, we'll edge our way over how about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about grape nuts flakes? Yep, how about those grape nuts flakes? Take an old hand's advice, partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy-given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. 
Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two-minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowlful, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. A desperately nervous man drops a key in the Eureka Cafe and it ends up in the new dishwasher. Roy Rogers rides to tell the stranger what has happened and finds himself ambushed by a gang of heavily armed bank robbers. The stranger blurts out the whereabouts of the key and part of the gang goes to Mineral City to check his story. And now in the Eureka Cafe... Yes, what can I do for you? A friend of mine thinks he dropped a key in here. Did you find it? You better have found it. Just a minute. I not only don't know what you're talking about, but I don't like the way you talk. Lady, we don't know you and we don't care about you. We just want that key. I think you'd better leave right now. Yeah, maybe I better have a look around a bit first. Huh? Yeah, you better, Al. We'll have a cup of coffee while we're looking. Start pouring, lady. I don't have to serve people like you. Ah, oh, come on, lady. Our friend Sherry dropped the key here, and we don't mean no harm. Well, if you want some coffee and you're willing to pay for it and behave yourselves, you can look around. I think I know the man you mean. He sat at the table over there. Hey, remember that key the fella dropped in the coffee cup, Dale? Well, I finally remembered to take it out of the machine. Pat. I got so interested in putting new dishes in that I just plum forgot to look for it the two times the machine stopped. That's what we're looking for, Parker. I'll take that key, son. Pat, I... Yeah, you ain't the fella who dropped it, and a friend of mine went out looking for him. And... We know all about that. They sent us after the key. Now hand it over. Well, sure. If you were sent for it, here you are. I'll take it. Never mind, Al. I'll take it. All right. But come on, let's get out of here. Never mind the coffee, lady. We changed our mind. Pat Brady, of all the idiotic times to burst in here with that key. <laughs> well, Dale, I didn't have Why any... Why in the I... world did you just hand it over to them? Dale, those fellers had guns sticking out all over them, just like porcupine quills. And if Roy and that stranger sent them back for the key... Listen, there's why... something mighty wrong here, Pat. Roy would have caught up with that stranger in five minutes, and he's been gone almost an hour. Now, I'm going to follow those men. Well, sure. Nelly Bell will follow anybody anywhere, and I'm sure not scared of them, no matter how many guns they got. Oh, if those men heard you clanking up on them in Nelly Bell, you wouldn't have a chance. We'll have to follow them on horseback, quietly. Well, I'd have to go way out to the Double R Bar Ranch to get a horse. And by that and time... And by that time, it would be too late. Yeah. Well, Buttermilk's in the stable, and Bullet's there with him. You just stay here, Pat, and play with a dishwasher. Buttermilk and Bullet and I'll find out what's going on. Good work, Jim. You creased one of them that time. Yeah, Rod, but I'm out of ammunition. Well, I am too, almost. But I'm ready to try to pull Balanced Rock down on our friends. You lasso it, Roy, and I'll pull it down. Fine, Jim. And I'm glad to see you get hold of those nerves. Here goes. It's a long throw, Roy. If you get out where they can see you... I can make it, I think. You did it great. Your rope looped right over the top. Well, they saw me, all right. Sure you want to go out and pull that rock over? I sure try. Let me have the rope. Now! <clears throat> Duck, Jim! It's bouncing. Over the ledge! Wow! <sighs> It worked, Roy. They're running every which way. Now, let's get on our horses quick, Jim. I know a shortcut to Mineral City. Come here, Trigger. Hurry up, boy. I guess Dale was mad at me, Roy. She stomped out of here, tossed a saddle on buttermilk, and she and Bullet headed after them fellas like Sam 60. Well, we've got to figure out what to do next and do it in a hurry. She's been gone about 20 minutes. It'll be dark about... Oh, maybe she's coming back now. That's Bullet's bark, and he's mighty excited. Let's go see. Hey, Bullet's all alone. Bullet, what's the matter, boy? Where's Dale? Hey, that dog acts like he wants us to follow him, Roy. He sure does. Come on, Trigger. We're going to follow Bullet. Is your horse all right, Jim? Sure, he isn't fast, but he can go all day. But, Roy, I haven't got a horse here, and Dale wouldn't let me use Nellie Bell. Well, I'll let you use Nellie Bell. 
She could come in mighty handy. Oh, wonderful, Roy. Nellie Bell's been waiting for a chance like this. I hope we can catch him in a hurry. They sure aren't going to hang around that balanced rock territory. If it gets too dark to follow their tracks... We'll, we'll leave that up to Bullet. He'll lead us to Dale, and then it'll be up to us. <laughs> All right, men, pull up. Oh, right. yeah. Well, we'll figure out our next move now. We better get rid of that girl right here. What do you mean, get rid of me? I wasn't bothering anyone. Your men had no right to stop me and hold me, Parker. I don't know how much you know, lady, but I'm sure it's too much. You tried to keep us from getting the key, remember? Yeah, and you sure tagged after us in a hurry. We've got to get to Zenith. I'm not interested in where you're going or what you're up to. I just want to go about my business peaceably. Don't you believe her, Parker. We run into her and her dog after Fowler and his partner got away from us. She was plenty interested in knowing whether we'd seen you and Al. That's why we grabbed her. What's this about a dog? He was a big, tough-looking fella. But he ran out on her when he seen we had her. I don't know what you're talking about. Untie me and let me go. I think we ought to take her along as a hostage. Maybe she's working with Fowler, and if he chases us... If Fowler gets up the nerve to chase us, we'll take care of him in a hurry. We're on to him now, and I say we'll get rid of the girl right here. Well, then we'd better hurry up. It's dark, and we got a long ride. I will have to separate and meet at the hideout tomorrow. Separate? Not unless I'm carrying the key. You're right, Red. As long as Parker's got the key, we're not letting him out of our sight. Stand here and argue like this. There's no telling who'll come along. You let Fowler get away, maybe he's notified the law already. I've always heard that thieves don't trust each other. Now I know it. That's enough out of you. Get off that horse. Red, tire to the tree, and we'll draw lots to see who finishes her off. My, you're certainly a bunch of brave men. Come on along, lady. Drag her over if she won't go. Now, look, Parker, you carried the key for an hour. You better let me take it now. I'm hanging out of that key. Oh, bullet. Bullet, aren't you going to bring boy? What are you mumbling about, lady? Never mind. If you're going to tie me here and shoot me, why don't you get it over with? Sure. Once around. Twice around, three times around, tuck in the end of the rope and tie it. Ouch! There you are. All set, Parker. I suppose when we draw a lot, you'll cheat on that, too. What do you call him a cheater? If I could only get loose, I can wiggle my hand, but I can't reach the knots. Well, we better come to an agreement right here now, or we'll all ride into Zenith together. You're wasting your breath, Al. You're wasting our time. Well, the girl's tied up. Why don't we get rid of her and then argue? <laughs> Oh, but you made it. Oh, I hope you brought Roy. Time for another Roy Rogers reminder. Know how to win. Yep, buckaroos, that's Roy's reminder for today. You know what a great feeling it is when you win a prize in school or win the big game? You get lots of praise. But partners, don't let that praise go to your head so much you crow over the losers. On the other hand, when you're on top, you've got to try and stay there. You have to keep right on practicing to keep on winning. And talking about winning the top honors next time, one of the best ways to do it is to stay healthy. Eat plenty of nourishing food like Post's Grape Nuts Flakes, the cereal Roy likes best for building up strength and energy. Yes, kids, Roy eats Grape Nuts Flakes for energy. His picture's on every package. Yes, Roy likes those well-tasting grape nuts flakes because their whole wheat energy starts going to work for you just two minutes after you eat a big, multi-rich bowlful. That's energy you need for most everything you do during the day. And you'll like the flavor of sugar-roasted grape nuts flakes. So if you want to be king of the cowboys in your corral, ask your mom to get you... Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. All right, Jim. Keep your eye on those men every second. If any of them make a move toward their guns, open up on them. Why don't we go in and shoot it out with them right now, Roy? There's five of them. Unless we can get them rattled again, we wouldn't have much of a chance. That'll reach his position in a few seconds. Meanwhile, I'll try to creep in and untie Dale. All right, Roy. I won't start shooting unless it's absolutely necessary. Good boy, Jim. Just keep those nerves steady. Good luck, Roy. All right, Al. If you don't trust me, you can draw a straw for me. <laughs> That's generous of you. Shooting the girl's your idea. I still think we ought to take her along for a hostage. Dale, everything's going to be all right. When I get you loose, 
drop down and crawl back quietly. Why? Do you think we can get out of here before they see us? Oh, I don't want to get out of here. I want to take those five men. There. Are you loose? Are you all right? Yes. Hey, where's that shooting coming from? Off to the right. Hey, those flashes, they're moving. There must be five, six men. They're too far away to get a bead on us. Duck and move back toward the trees. Right round up the horses. Pete, help them. Come on, Al. Look, Parker. Why don't you and me try to get away on foot? The posse will keep busy with the others. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. We'll see what happens. You'll see what happens, all right. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Jim. Get him, hey. Who are you? Never mind. Here, Jim. Hey, I'll break it loose. No, you don't. I've got him. Let me handle hey, this. We'll put you away in a hurry, Parker. Oh. Oh. Grab his guns, Dale. Right, right. And I'll tie him with the ropes they used on me. Attaboy, bullet. Get one of those others. You've had this coming for a long time, Al. I follow you, double crosser. I oh. Here's another one ready to be tied up, Miss. We're surrounded. What do we do? Alan Roy, Pat, you've got him in your headlights. Now come on and get in on the miss. That's it, Roy. Get this dog off of me. Get this dog off of me. All right, let him go, Bullet. I'll handle this one, too. Yeah, I got this one, Roy. Well, that's three. Ooh. I'm not having any trouble with this one. Neither am I. Are you all right? We sure are, Dale. This gang wasn't so tough once we figured out how to round them up. It's a good thing you thought to bring the posse, but they were just in time. Posse? What do you mean, Dale? Well, all that gunfire. Oh, those weren't shots. That was nothing but little old noisy Nellie Bell, a backfire. <laughs> yeah, it was oh. Roy's idea. When Bullet led us to where you were, Roy sent Pat around to flank the gang and confuse them. And it sure worked out fine. We've got five mighty quiet bank robbers here right now. And when we find which one has the key, we'll have all the evidence we need. The one they call Parker has the key. Good. Jim, find it and put it in your pocket, and this time, don't drop it. <laughs> I won't, Roy. I'm not nearly as shaky anymore, thanks to you. Well, if the men hadn't stopped to argue about that key, I might not have been here to ask you what's so special about it. Yeah, you never did get around to telling us what makes that key so important. The key opens the safety deposit box where the money that was stolen from the bank in Zenith is hidden. Jim here's working for the marshal in Zenith, and he was taking it to him as evidence. Yeah, I figured the gang would follow me as soon as they discovered it was gone. That's why I was so jittery when I was in your restaurant this afternoon. Well, I'll be darned. Bank robbers. Say, Roy, we better load these five guys in Nellabel and take them back to Mineral City. I was thinking we might just as well take them into Zenith. Sure. Why Mineral City, Pat? Well, for one thing, we left in such a hurry that... I forgot to lock up the cafe. Oh, Pat. I guess you don't have to worry, Dale. Uh, when Sheriff drops in for coffee and finds the doors unlocked, well, he'll sit there till somebody gets back. That's just it. He's liable to get nosing around and playing with that new dishwasher. And nobody touches that little beauty but me. Uh, you win, Pat. We'll go back to Mineral City and let the Zenith Marshal pick his prisoners up there. But next time, will you please at least look at the dishes before you toss them in your new plaything? <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again, happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you. Till we meet again. Remember what Roy Rogers says, Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. 
Roy's Right, fellas and gals, as a cereal it's dandy, with milk or cream. For snacks it's so handy, or you can eat it like candy right out of the box. Poe Sugar Crisp is excitingly new, deliciously different. Nourishing puffed wheat, candy coated with honey and sugar. Ask Mom to get Poe Sugar Crisp in the big red, white, and blue box with the three bears on the front tomorrow. Featured in the cast were Frank Hemingway, Paul Richards, Tyler McVeigh, Herb Bygren, and Jess Kirkpatrick. The script was based on a story by Bill Kelsey. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.